Hello, and welcome to Dr. G at the Heart of Healthcare. I have an amazing community member here, Jamie Shapiro, a certified senior move manager um, and founder of Silver Linings Transitions. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad you're here because you provide such a great service to the community. Um, everyone, I met Jamie at, um, was it at Sunrise? I believe Sunrise, Sunrise Senior is. Living. And it was a tailgate with Oasis Senior Advisor. And you had your little bee thing and your apron and you make moves magical for seniors. I love that. I had How'd a magic come? wand. I had a magic wand. Oh my gosh. So- yeah. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came up with this business. Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> I love we, let's no. go. No. So, okay. So here is my background. I uh, fast or go back 19 years. I am mom of two kid, young kids, one and three, working as a realtor. I actually uh, left my career in um, department store buying to... Um, become a realtor so that I would, I thought had some job flexibility and be home with my little ones. And um, I didn't really like what I was doing. Uh, and I didn't feel like I was really contributing to society, but I did feel like I was getting that balance that a lot of moms want of being, you know, I needed to work and also being available to my children. And, um, and then I found out, or then I, I discovered that I had cancer I, I thought that I had a benign uh, cyst in my neck when they when they biopsied it. It turns out that it was thyroid cancer, which is a which is cancers go. And, you know, this is a doctor that's a they call that the good cancer. But the 10 mm. days that I had to wait as a young mom with a one year old and a three year old for pathology to come back and for them to tell me what I had um, was life changing. And had I not gone through that, um, I wouldn't have reevaluated the way that I was living my life. Uh, I had a friend who had cancer young. He was um, a freshman in college and he has survived. And he told me that cancer is like getting a front row seat to life. Mm. And Ooh. it is. It, it, yeah, yeah, it is. And you really evaluate because now, you know, you are on borrowed time. Mm. And so I knew then that I didn't want to keep being a realtor, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it was really hard to walk away from a second income that allowed me to be flexible and um, I'm skipping over a few years, had a third child once the fear kind of left me. And um, and again, I'm 19 years cancer free. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we moved from Florida to California and I was going to be a stay at home mom for the first time. And uh, and then California is a lot more expensive than Florida. And anyway, uh, long story short, I literally stumbled on the senior move management industry who was having their national conference in San Diego. And um, I went to the conference sort of as a fact finding mission. And one of the things that they said was that realtors, it was a really great career, it was a good segment for realtors. And I knew that I wanted to do something different than what I was doing. Actually, at the time, I was working at a cancer foundation doing their marketing. Um and I, I was just like, wow, this is this is what I want to do. My, I was very close to my grandparents. I was their only grandchild, so mm -hmm. I really love seniors. And also, when you've had cancer, you you want to be a senior. Like that appeals to me. Uh, so I I went to the conference and loved it. And uh, fast forward, we're now ten years in, and I love that I get to help the people that we help every day. And I I want to explain obviously what it is that we do because I didn't give that part. And, um, and then about who our team, who our team is. That is wonderful. And I want to rewind. Okay. There must be a better way. And this is just a random healthcare tangent for us to, I know, I know there was a silver lining in that 10 days, right? But when people get the C word diagnosis or they're waiting for the pathology or they're waiting for the staging or they're waiting for the treatment appointment, that is so agonizing. I have a personal friend right now who's dealing with this with her husband and it, it's a nightmare. And this is a healthcare person. So I, I don't know, like, how can we make that better for people so they're not just you know, losing their minds in, in the days that they're waiting to get to the appointments. I think that's, that's torture. 
I would love to talk about that actually, because one of the things that I did is I went and saw a therapist who um, specialized in oncology patients. And again, I'm in the 10 days of waiting. And I also didn't share this part, but they found spots on my lungs. So I had to go a year of scans to determine if the cancer had spread. Again, at 30, at 35, one-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, mm. And so one of the things that the therapist told me to do was to find my happy place and um, find that place that you go when, when you just need to feel better. And then I don't know if this came from her, if it came later, but I developed a top 10 list and it's like, what are the 10 things I can do besides worry about this right now? You know, what are things that I enjoy doing? What are, um, and, and I think that, you know, I'm, I've had, I've learned that when we are in gratitude, we can't also be in fear. And so focusing on all of the wonderful things that we do have, have. Um, but I did lose one of my best friends to cancer. So it's really hard for me to stand up as a quote unquote survivor when, I mean, I'm really lucky. I had, I had thyroid cancer. You know, my friend died of ovarian cancer. Um, one of my best friends, husbands just died of brain cancer, uh, in February of last year. So, you know, it's easy to say that as a survivor, um, of a, of a very fairly treatable, you know, my, the kind that I had in the stage that it was, was, it was in a lymph node and, Anyway, and, and I know we didn't come on to talk about that, but I'm really glad you asked me that question because my doctor made me feel horrible. He wasn't answering my calls the way that I was told. My ex-husband was in the room waiting because I had an incision in my neck that he was supposed to check on. And he proceeds to tell me he thinks I have cancer and they've sent my pathology to Italy. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get my husband. And then I get my husband and then he makes me wait in the room because he's now got other patients he has to see. And, you know, and I actually say this to our clients, which is a good segue. My company, Silver Linings Transitions, does a few things. But the major thing that we do is called move management. And we specialize in seniors. And when seniors are moving out of their home, many of them, especially the older generations, they they haven't moved a lot. They might have been in their home for 40 or 50 years, and they have a lot of anxiety around it. And I've actually said to them, I know that we do this every day. So it's no big deal to me, but it's a big deal to you. And that is what my doctor should have said. It should have been, a. it was my big deal. It was my big deal. You know, I've said that too, you know, I work in hospice care. You all know this is not yeah. just a hospice show, but I say that often, you know, to renew our compassion because this is common for us working as death workers and being at the end of life. But this is not a new thing to that person. They're in the disaster. It's the end of the world. And that family is having a lot of stress. And so when we say that, that kind of just kind of makes them feel like we're with them because it's, it's a lot, but thank you for sharing that. And I think it all ties into, you know, the name of your company. You know, I was looking at the idiom about, you know, silver linings and, and like the definition and all that, just to kind of prepare, you know, and it says an advantage that comes from a difficult or unpleasant situation. And another one said, it's a metaphor for optimism in, in our vernacular of English and, um, you know, any negative occurrence can have a positive impact. And it's kind of hard to see that when you're in the midst of it. You know, we all have difficult times, but do learning how to do that, you know, I guess it takes a skill or people, people like you who help us see the silver linings, you know, when we're in those things. So I'm glad that you said that. And especially since it's stress awareness month in April, we need to learn how to not focus on our stressors. And I like what you said, the 10 things that you could be happy about, right? Instead of right. worrying. I'm well, not just I'm happy about like, what are activities that you can do that you enjoy that we're, are going to get your mind out of this? And I would also say another piece of advice is, and I would say this to my clients as well, is approaching something with curiosity, you know, rather than I'm really nervous because we don't, nobody likes uncertainty. Uncertainty is a really uncomfortable place for us to be. And mm -hmm. so rather than sitting here and being in this uncertainty, let's approach it from curiosity, what's possible. And so for our clients who are often making a move, typically to a senior community. And that's not every client that we work with, but that's the majority of, you know, they're downsizing or right-sizing a lifetime of belongings and they're going through all of those things. And it's the museum and the history of their lives in stuff. Mm -hmm. And they are now selecting their favorite things and, you know, going into a community, which is, which is a huge uncertainty because the chances of them having lived in one is, you know, very small. 
They're usually leaving their family home that they've been in for all of these years where they've raised their children and had their grandchildren. And I'm like, what, what's possible? Let, let's look at all of the good things that you have to look forward to. Like, for instance, I kind of see senior living as as dormitory living like we did back when we went to college, right? Yes. And so you're making new friends and you're going to be have time to discover your hobbies and you're going to have time to do things that you haven't done and you're going to make new connections with people and um so let's approach let's approach this rather than being, you know, fearful and I, and I don't, you know, I don't know what's coming, but curious. You know, what's and 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 I I love I have never heard someone in any podcast look up the term silver linings. And that so well defines exactly what I intended silver linings transitions to be about. It really was finding a positive in a negative situation. And that mm. was, that was starting the company for me. And by the way, it was divinely inspired. Um, I'm, I'm very glad that I have faith mm-hmm. and, um, and the word really came to me and, and, you know, so I, I feel pretty fortunate. Well, I have chills over here just hearing about it. So thank you for that. So, you know, though we see a lot of those, you know, transitions for seniors, why do you think it's so difficult? Like if we could pin it to one thing, you know, it's often challenging for the adult children to have to, you know, sell the parents' house and put them in the memory care or you know, maybe one spouse wants to leave the house and the other one never wanted to leave the house. Like, why is it so hard? And and when do they know to call you? Those are two things I'm curious so, about. I would say the reason that it's so, so hard going back to the uncertainty is that, you know, we like predictability. We like to know. And, I, you know, actually, I'm dealing with this with my 23-year-old child who just graduated from college and is now working. And, and, you know, twenties is a tough time because, you know, you go from kindergarten to first grade and first grade to second, and then you go your junior year to your senior year. And then all of a sudden you're like, now what? And we don't like that. I mean, I get it. I don't love it either. Um, I'm very blessed with a positive attitude. So I would say it's the uncertainty. And I would also say if we're being really honest, and I'm sure you know this, that we don't like to talk about aging and death in our society. And it's like, if we just bury our heads, then then it, we don't have to face it. And the reality is that when we're, you know, moving mom and dad, or when we're moving ourselves, you know, I haven't gone through that yet, but it's like, okay, this is, this is like maybe the final chapter, really. I mean, this, and, and saying goodbye to a lifetime of accumulations and the mementos that we picked up along the way. And, and also I think people really want to be remembered. I mean, I know it's really important to me. Um, You were sharing that you have a grandchild and I'm envious because at this point, you well, one of my child children is saying that they will have kids, but the other two are like, we don't want kids, but you know, like the continuity of who we are and and having a, a legacy and, and, you know, a lot of times with the clients that we work with, when they are, you know, parting with their belongings, because you can't go from a four bedroom or a three bedroom home to a one or a two bedroom small apartment and keep everything. And, you know, we're going to talk about stress awareness because when we have too much stuff, that brings its own source of stress. Clutter is really bad for us. So I definitely want to make sure, Dr. G, that we handle that. But you asked me such an important question that I didn't want to not address it properly. Yeah, well, I, I'm seeing clutter around my desk now. So I, I, I'm learning and taking notes now. Well, so, you and some other very brilliant people like me at the clutter desk. <laughs> Yeah, well, tomorrow, um, well, well, tomorrow, you know, the day after this recording, uh, we're going to be celebrating or observing National Healthcare Decisions Day. And that's when we want folks to plan ahead for the late stages of life and and how they want to live. Uh, That's something that is going to come from that live stream. How can we plan these transitions better? I have seen that it seems like a surprise to the family, like, oh, we have to move. And so I'm not belittling it or or trying to be insensitive at all. But what can we do to make this a part of the plan, you know, for of the advanced care? I love that. Well, first of all, crisis never makes an appointment. And I like to remind people of that. Um, so being proactive and going into a decision, and I say move to a community 
um, when you have the resources and the decision is on is on your terms, when you can enjoy what independent living in a senior community really is supposed to be. And rather than I'm going to be taken out on a stretcher in this house, like maybe maybe that's not best because, you know, when they talk about connection, like being isolated is more detrimental. And you're a doctor. I hate to preach it to you, but it's it's more detrimental to our health than smoking. I mean, so social isolation is not good. So we need to have community. And so if you have the means to be in a senior community, then you know, you're, you're accessing, as I shared earlier, you're accessing people, you're accessing great food, you're accessing, you know, the ability to come and go, I call it cruise ship living on land. It you is. Know? It is. So how do we have the conversations? Well, first of all, we have to have the conversations and, and we have to stop saying, you know, pretending like that if we don't talk about it, it isn't going to happen. But how do you want to live your last 10? And I've, 10, 15, 20 years, I've heard people live an age better when they're in community, their health gets better, they're mm -hmm. eating better, you know, they're not having to worry about being scammed and all of the things that are out there. So have that conversation and then, you know, start thinking about where you want to live. And, and, you know, you met, we met through Oasis. So that was somebody does placement. So there are people who are basically like realtors of senior communities and they take you around and they get to know you and they figure out, you know, where you should be. And then a company like ours is the one that helps you determine, you know, uh, what are you going to be able to keep? And we help, you know, we help make those decisions and we help the family navigate that. That can also be, and I don't know if you've heard this expression, but weddings and funerals bring out the worst in people. Ooh. And Along with you know, politics and religion, someone said earlier. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when somebody passes away and they haven't made their wishes clear and it happened in my own family, you know, battles, battles. And I'm not just talking about the money. I'm talking about the stuff. So mm -hmm. giving your family that gift of taking care of it before you pass. When my grandmother died, she died unexpectedly. My mother did what's called grief hoarding and brought all of my grandmother's things into her home because she wasn't ready to let go of my grandmother. And now my mom has hoarding disorder. And it was no gift that my grandmother, you know, gave. And then there was a lamp that she had promised me my whole life. I loved the lamp. I was her only grandchild. And she didn't tell anybody else that that lamp was supposed to go to me. I, I did get that lamp back. I, I will, I will, but it took a couple years, you know, of convincing like, Hey, that lamp was supposed to be mine. Um, where if my grandmother had just, you know, let people know what her wishes were and, and then also just sharing the legacy, like, you know, what does this lamp mean? So that for instance, my kids, they just see a lamp. I want them to know the story that I was four years old when my grandmother bought that lamp. I used to hide in the little, um, sofa table that could open and I would take the little, uh, tchotchke out that she had and get under that. And then, you know, when she died, I shipped it from Florida to California. And, you know, what, what's the story behind this lamp? That's so. beautiful. That's beautiful. Wow. Well, I think you sharing that personal story really, you know, brings us home. And so you answered it, you know, your service that you provide to the senior community is wonderful. Listeners, I want you to go check that website out. Uh, seniors, if you're not on that computer, get one of your grandkids or one of your neighbors to go on there and help you out um, because there's so much out here for you uh, to help you plan the late stages of life. That's my own terminology I like to use, sure. you know, the last two to 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is for you to have the kind of life that you want to live. And so we thank Jamie Shapiro for being a guest here on the show and helping us see the silver linings in those transitions. So any last thoughts before we let our folks go? Uh, no, I appreciate it. The only other thing that I wanted to share is that we also do photo digitization and organization because those old photos, uh, they were not printed the same way that we print now. And they only have 125 years of life on them. So I always tell people, even if you're using your smartphone, you want to back up those photos so that they don't disintegrate and, and share, you know, with your loved ones, you know, what they need to know as we're, you know, just, I, I have to mention photos, but I, what a great interview and definitely didn't go where I expected it to, but but really, I feel like it was the it was the conversation it was supposed to have to be. So thank you. Like all of these, you know, it's just us chatting and and with everything we do, we're trying to educate and empower folks so that they can navigate this healthcare system and, 
and and live the way they want to live. So that's our hope and intention. So it always comes through. So thank you for being here and everything you do. And we're going to sign out. Peace.